Hello, I'm Brooke Ballat and I'm a senior consultant with Heller Consulting. Today, I'm going to walk you through some key features of Microsoft's fundraising and engagement. We'll start with a quick tour of the fundraising and engagement user interface. It has a clean, modern design and user-friendly navigation features. This bar at the top is the primary navigational structure. The menu is configurable and will change depending on a user's assigned security role. At the top right are buttons for things like search, quick create, advanced find, and other actions you might want to do from anywhere in the system. These buttons are persistent and will appear on every page. On the left side, there's also a navigation bar. The options here will change depending on two things, a user's assigned security role and what module of fundraising and engagement they're working in. The modules area is found at the bottom left and allows you to switch between different parts of fundraising and engagement, such as development, fundraising, gift entry, and events. When you select a module, the specific entities or tables shown in the left sidebar will change to allow you to access the most important elements for that module easily. For example, when you're in the development module, like this one, you'll see the prospecting section that includes opportunities and funding reports. When you change to the gifts module, you'll see the gift processing section appear, which includes transactions, donor commitments, and payment schedules. In the center of the screen, you can see that each of the modules also has pre-built dashboards showing key metrics for that area. These are really helpful for staff members who are trying to get a quick glimpse of performance metrics. For example, the development module has a development overview that highlights things like recent major gifts, gifts summarized by their designation, and donations by opportunity manager. When you switch to the gifts module, the fundraising overview dashboard shows gift revenue by month, fundraising campaigns with revenue totals, a chart of gifts received by payment type, and various other metrics. The last main navigation element is the secondary menu, which is this row beneath the bar at the top, also called the ribbon. This contains solution functionalities like save, create, and delete. This menu is also configurable and will change depending on the record that you're on and the user's assigned security role. Two additional elements of the navigation that are very helpful when working in fundraising and engagement are the recent and pinned menus in the left sidebar. The recent section shows all the records you've visited in the system with the most recent at top. And the pinned section is like a list of bookmarked records. To add a record to your pinned section, just click the thumbtack next to any of the records in your recent list, and then that record will appear in your pin section. Before we dive deeper into fundraising and engagements functionality around managing your constituents, let's take a look at contacts and accounts, which are the foundational records in fundraising and engagement. First, I'll navigate to a contact record by selecting one that I've previously pinned. A contact record is used to represent an individual constituent, as well as link them with related gifts, interactions, and relationships to other records. This type of record can be used for any individual, a donor, a prospect, a volunteer, or any other type of constituent. Here's an example of a contact record for Gabriela Morales. We'll look at this in more detail in a moment. The account record is the other foundational record, and there are two types of accounts households and organizations. Now I'll navigate to Gabriella's household account record by following the link to the Morales Gallagher household record. A household record links a group of contacts through a central record to provide a high level summary of their respective gifts, interactions, and opportunities. A household record could have just one related contact or multiple related contacts in the case of spouses or family members. This is the household that Gabriella is part of, and in this case, there are two members, Gabriella and her spouse, Chris Gallagher. Lastly, we'll quickly navigate to an organization record, in this case, the record for Gabriella's employer. An 
an organization account record is used to track the companies, foundations, agencies, vendors, and any other organizations that you interact with and need to track information about. The organization account record also provides the ability to link related gifts, interactions, and relationships. This is the company that Gabriella works for, Fourth Coffee. I'll stop there for a second and just share that one of my favorite things about fundraising and engagement is that it provides a really intuitive user interface. You have multiple options for ways to navigate between records so you can find the workflow that works best for you, and your colleagues may find a different way. I also think the way that different areas of functionality are grouped into modules is really helpful. It allows you to focus on just the type of information you need at a particular moment, whether you're digging into fundraising information or gift entry or something else. Next up, I'll walk you through each of the constituent records in more detail. Now I'll highlight some of the key elements on Gabriella Morales' contact record to orient you. At the top left, we have the constituent's name and avatar where you can upload a photo or other image. This record is then identified as a contact record right under Gabriella's name. At the top right is a key field used for categorization, the primary constituent type. This field allows you to categorize your contacts based on their primary relationship with your organization, such as donor, advocate, beneficiary, board member, etc., and these values can be customized. The left side has detailed constituent information. The contact information section contains the constituent's name, salutations, company, household, job title, birthday, and various other details. Further down on the screen, there are also sections to track details like emails, phone numbers, and social media handles. Back up top to the center pane, here we can see a snapshot of both actionable and historical information about a contact's engagement with your nonprofit. You can see giving summaries for the individual, such as last gift amount, lifetime giving amount, and last giving channel. And then further down, there's also a section that summarizes giving for the household. It tells you the number of household members, the total household giving, and other details. On the right side, we have additional detail about the constituent, such as the objectives the donor is interested in supporting, and a timeline of interactions with the donor, such as emails, phone calls, notes, all of those types of interactions. At the top, you can see an example of the secondary menu or ribbon changing based on the record that you're on. On the contact record, you can access key actions like update an address, add a gift, add a membership. Lastly, beneath the constituent's name, we have access to additional detail and other records that are related to the constituent. By clicking on these tabs, we can access more information. Like on the details tab, we can see additional giving summaries and the constituents preferences, like their preferred language and any contact restrictions. On the address details tab, we can see the primary, secondary, and alternate addresses. And on the donation information tab, we can see a detailed view of the transactions, donor commitments, and payment schedules related to the donor. Each of these tabs provides a quick way to navigate to other related records. Now we're looking at Gabriella's household account, and you can see the layout is similar to the contact record. At the top left, we have the household name and avatar, and then this record is identified as an account right under the household name. At the top right is a key field used for categorization, the account type, which identifies whether an account is a household or organization. In this case, we're looking at a household. The left side has details about that household, such as the household name, salutations, and the address. The center pane has summary information like household giving, the number of household members, and the date of the last communication. You can also use this section to toggle between the household members quickly to see the direct contributions made by each person. The right side has additional information about the household, such as a list of individual members in that household and a timeline of interactions, just like we saw in the constituent record, including emails, phone calls, and notes. At the top, you can see that secondary menu or ribbon is slightly different than what we saw on the contact record. 
And then again, beneath the household name, we have access to additional detail and other records related to this household. The last of the core constituent records is the organization account. This is Gabriella's employer, Fourth Coffee. As with the other records, at the top left, we have the organization name and avatar, where you can upload a photo or other image. At the top right, we have that key field used for categorization, the account type, which identifies that this account is an organization. The left side of the screen has detailed account information, things like the account name, account type, website, and parent account. Further down, there are also sections to track details like the primary contact at the organization, emails, and phone numbers. The center pane has a snapshot of both actionable and historical information about the organization account's engagement with your nonprofit. You can see giving summaries for the organization, including details like last gift amount, lifetime giving amount, and last giving channel. The right side has additional information about the account, such as objectives the organization may be interested in supporting and a timeline of interactions with the organization, including emails, phone calls, and notes. At the top, you can see another example of the secondary menu or ribbon at the top changing based on the record you're on. On this account record, you can access key actions like opening the org chart, adding a gift, and adding a membership. Lastly, beneath the organization account's name, we again have access to additional detail and other related records. For example, additional giving summaries, primary, secondary, and alternate addresses, a detailed view of transactions, donor commitments and payment schedules, and many other related records. Fundraising and engagement is designed to help organizations strengthen and grow their relationships with constituents by providing a true 360-degree view that includes constituent information, relationships, giving summaries, preferences, and a variety of other related records. The core constituent records we reviewed, contacts, household accounts, and organization accounts, address most organizations' needs out of the box and can be customized to capture additional data points. Fundraising and engagement provides busy nonprofit staff with the most important information at their fingertips and enables organizations to increase their constituent engagement and strengthen their mission impact. Thanks for joining me today for a quick demo of some of my favorite features of fundraising and engagement. For more on Microsoft solutions for nonprofits, be sure to check our website at teamheller.com.